Um, everybody, this is Sheets, and welcome to Survivor Pool 2023-2024 slash with me and Brave Jayhawk. We're looking forward to another good season of uh, teaching you how to play this uh, very fascinating game. I encourage you to, to check out our video from last week where we went over more of the basics of how these things work. Um, and right now we're going to be sharing, I'm sharing my screen with the uh, survivor grid, but, um, but, uh, whatever Mike wants to do as far as I could have him share his screen, or if we could look at what's behind him, whatever it is. So the format is basically, you know, we're, we're going to go through, um, essentially the, the good candidate picks for the week. Um, we're going to try to separate, you know, chalk versus non-chalk and, you know, dive in a little bit with with planning for the the course this season but before that why don't you give me a sense um well i could start i'm going to tell everybody the the the, the various pools that i'm going to be in yeah. um and he and then and then mike will do the same but in general we're going to focus on mostly single pick uh survivor pool formats but we could talk about others as well so i'm going to be i'm uh with a partner just for full transparency i'm going to be playing 10 well, 20, <laughs> um, uh, but half, uh, but 10 each of the uh, the Circa Survivor Pool, which is a single pick uh, pool where it's like 10 billion for first, uh, including the, the, the necessity to play one team of the three uh, Thanksgiving Day games um, and then one team from the Christmas Day slates. We'll get to that uh, kind of a little later on during the season. I'm also playing uh, one just massive single pick uh, uh, pool where it's probably end up chopping. I'm playing a handful of those nitrogen single pick pools, trying to defend my two year run of there. And then I'm playing a pretty fascinating double pick pool where they start with like a billion people. Uh, it's very small buy in, well, small, whatever. It's like a hundred bucks, whatever. And there's double picks week five. And then starting week nine, the rest of the season. Oh wow! So, yeah, so that's a war, um, and uh, and I'm also playing one more single pick uh, pool, which is pretty sharp. So got a whole bunch of different things going on. What what are you playing this year? We're doing uh, my my partner and I are doing three pools together. We're doing four entries of circa this year instead of uh, last year we did six, which was the cap. They increased the cap to eight, and we decided just to drop down to four. No particular reason why we just chose four. Uh, we're doing the pool that we're going to try and defend. We've won this pool four times. A uh, thousand players, thousand entries, ten entry cap, single entry, uh, single standard single picks, but it goes to the playoffs. Um, and this 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 rule did not come into play last year because all the the, the best teams are used by every everybody in the regular season. But if you have not used a team during the regular season, you can use them twice in the playoffs. Otherwise, you can use them once. We have 10 entries in that. We added a new pool that ha that's going to have over 1,000. It's single picks until week 13, and then it's doubles the rest of the way. And the last one I, I, do, by my, I, I do on my own. So those, those first three I do with my partner, Jesse. Last one I do on my own. Uh, $25 entry. They had 20,000 entries last year. And we have doubles in I know, 6, 12, 13, 16, 17, 18, something like that. Like five double pick weeks. All right. So this is what we're going to do. Again, we're going to use the you know, survivor grid as this kind of the template for just kind of how to go, go through these. And again, I'm not going to go into like all the basics every week. If you want the basics of survivor, you can go to the first week's video. And we went into that ex uh, ad nauseum. What we're going to do is we are going to sort this by EV, which uh, Survivor Grid kind of does for you, which is, you know, combines the, the uh, win percentage and, and popularity. But one thing to note is that it used to be, uh, you used to have Office Pool, then Yahoo, and uh, Run Your Pool as your choices. But this year, uh, they have ESPN, as, and I don't even know if that's how many hmm. people are in that or whatever it is. But you can toggle back and forth. I usually toggle back and forth between office football pool and an average. But usually, office football pool is the usually usually the best 
the best uh, predictor of, of popularity, is, is at least in the in the big pools. Because remember, the, the way the law of large numbers works is if you're in a big pool, you know that you want to you want to look at big pools, and that the bigger the pool, the bigger the sample size, the more likely it is to be somewhat accurate. Now, again, as the yeah. course of the season goes on, you know, and and the pools get whittled down, then it's going to be much more a function of you know what your pool kind of looks like. So I'm just going to rank these um, by EV, and we're going to go through um, just, you know, in kind of like clusters, and we're going to talk about, you know, what 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 are good candidate plays. Now, then there, there are certain plays which I have just literally zero interest in, and we'll talk about those as well until we get down to a point where we don't like anything anymore. So let's start with just for the for for no other reason. Let's let's rank these by average EV, and we'll talk about Baltimore, Seattle, and Washington only because they just are ranked the highest as far as just overall EV. Now, again, we're not talking about just win percentage; we're talking about you know the function of win percentage as opposed to popularity. Why don't you talk about these three teams, and then I'll give you my takes on Baltimore, Seattle, and Washington. Okay, so I'll start with Washington. Washington was my favorite pick back in April. Uh, for my first look once the schedule came out. That is no longer the case, um, but I'll get back get to that in a second. My favorite picks to begin the season were Washington and Seattle, or back in April, rather. Um, and What was the third team? Baltimore. Baltimore, okay. Um, I'll, I'll start with Baltimore. Uh, Jesse and I spoke a couple hours ago. I think Baltimore is a good portfolio play this week. Um, if I had one entry in one pool, I wouldn't take them. They have two very attractive spots in three and 14. And again, some aren't going to like the look way out there strategy, but you got, you got to go with something and then just kind of hope it works out. 14 is a reasonable lookout point. I think for right now, um, Baltimore won't be out of the playoffs by that point. We don't know about injuries for either team. But the Rams are a very attractive opponent that week. And the other games are are a pretty good indicator of why I'd like to maybe have Baltimore there. And then I kind of like to work backwards. I have no problem taking Baltimore this week. They're the highest favorite team. They're obviously picked fairly high. But it seems conceivable to get through the season without having them pass week one. What are, what are your thoughts uh, on that take for Baltimore? Okay. So I guess I'll start with this. So uh, one, one other uh, thing that I would mention in terms of true transparency, I don't think that this is probably not the right thing to do, but we're going to do it anyway. So what me and my partner are doing again, I'm partners with him on Circa and like, and in one other pool, but and, and by myself and some others, we are not talking through our picks um, until week five with each other. We're going to be going on our own. Um, and, and then once we get through week five, then we're going to combine our thoughts. And, and uh, so uh, what I'm, what I'm explaining to you now is what my, my, my complete, my own takes on all this. Okay. I personally, I'm not going to have a share of Baltimore throughout any of my books. Um, I'm, I'm, I am, I'm just, just not doing that this year. Uh, um, I, I agree with everything that, that Mike said is that it is a decent portfolio type play to, you know, to reduce risk and, 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 and all of that. And I completely don't disagree, but I just have a couple of other teams that are a little bit, a little, a little more uh, aggressive than I do. I just rather play. You know, so oh, I, I agree. So, I, I, I'm we're I'm also not taking any Baltimore, but yeah. if you made me pick between Baltimore and Washington, I would have ra- I'd rather take Baltimore. I, I I would rather just hope Washington loses and save Baltimore. Um, I'd rather just hope Washington loses. Yeah, um, and you know w- w- the problem with Washington is with not taking them. It's their clear best game all year, and it's really not even close as it stands right now. But if you're going to win the pool this year, I, I think there's there's one very clear strategy, and that is hope Arizona wins more than zero games. 
and hope that Arizona wins in week one, seven, nine, 11, 13. Hang on just one, like sec, one, sec, one, sec, one second, one second, one second. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I just had to take that. I, um, I think the clear, I think a clear strategy this year is hope Arizona wins a lot of games. Um, and by a lot, I mean like four or five and hope that they're in the weeks that they are heavily picked against. Yeah. So I'm they are, just, Oh, so good. Yeah. Uh, the thing with the thing with Arizona's schedule is obviously they're going to be a very big underdog in a lot of weeks. The problem is Arizona is in each of those weeks, they're like the second biggest dog or first biggest dog. And they're playing against teams that most people will have available. So I, I think a really good strategy is just never pick against them in these five or six particular weeks. And then just hope and, and just hope that they win a couple games. It's, it's, it, it, each one they win, it might knock out 20 to 35% of the pool. Yeah. So for me, I'm a little different. So I, I do like Washington as one of my, as one of my plays this week. I'm just a, a real sucker for that zero future value thing, you know, and, and, yeah, no. and, and they are going to be popular this week. Um, if they and, were a 10 point favorite, I'd be all over them. And yeah. At seven. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'd rather be hopeful. And, and I do like Seattle as well. Um, and part of it is, is, is not to get too advanced, but part of it, is for some for the reason that you brought up in our in our season look last week, and for to to remind everybody what um what Mike pointed out is 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 week number seven. And I hate to steal your thunder, but but that was such a great point that I'm going to steal it as my own right now. Is that when you look at week seven, you have Seattle um, as you know right now at least you know, the, the the heaviest favorite on the board by a full three points. You know Seattle. And Kansas City, and, and no one's going to probably play Kansas City because they everybody's going to save them. People are probably going to save Philadelphia. Or probably save Baltimore, Denver. They might people might have used you know whatever, and 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 Seattle is going to be just wickedly wildly popular in in week seven. So if you can get off of that in any way, shape, or form, it's probably a good idea to do it. So you take a week like this where they are you know a pretty pretty good play anyway. You, you know, you get that off the board. I don't have to worry about about getting tempted into the into the into the chalk in a week seven. So, so I actually like them a lot more than I originally had based on on our conversation last week. So, um, and, and not and not just week seven, but week ten as well. The the thing you have to pick eighteen winners in a standard single pick uh, uh, tournament with eighteen teams. If you if you're not going to take Seattle in the in week seven or 10, then you might not use them at all. And when, when that happens, you, you're, just, you're just drawing from a lot less teams toward the end of the season. Yeah, they might end up being a nice pick, but if you use them up front in an earlier week, then you'll have one more team available later in the season when you get down to the end. The reason I'm looking at week 10 uh, – by that time, people who have, they're the fourth largest favorite that week. They won't be like a slam dunk uh, pick by any means, but some people have already picked Cincinnati, Dallas, and Buffalo, or saving those teams for if it, there's a Thanksgiving slate or, you know, Buffalo for later in the season. And Seattle's going to have some ownership in week 10 as well. So if you're, if you're just not going to take them in both, if there's two weeks that you'd like to fade them, it makes a lot more sense to take them. And, you have two spots. So I really like Seattle for one and three and then just be done with them and, and hope it works out. All right. Next group will go again, just for, boy, we could just uh, do it however we want. Um, we're going to take this whole group, you know, cause there's really not much to play if any, even, even within this group, but we're going to take it all the way down to the, the 0.96 Dallas. Um, so let's just take the next three, I guess, three teams here. Let's, let's take, Minnesota, Jacksonville, and Denver. Um, so I, I guess I'll go first with this group. Um, I, I, I have Minnesota and Denver as both teams that fit the fit the good profile from this week. Uh, they're very similar to me as say a Washington without the same type of ownership. Um, they, 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 um, their EV is very close to Washington. They also have very little future value. Denver, Denver, we could talk about specifically because Denver, I'm, I was torn whether to, to save them for two because week two is is a war. I mean, to say the least. 
Um, yeah. But I figure as part of a portfolio, you know, I could use some Denver's and, and, and now and whatever it is. So I think Denver's, you know, between week one and two, I think it makes they're 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 pretty strong. So I, I figure I'll use them in, in one in one of those two weeks. So I figured maybe this week could be a good one. So I do like Minnesota and Denver. Jacksonville, um, I, you know, they, they just have way too many other opportunities to use them. I mean, week three, week six, week, week 11, I mean, even God forbid you're alive, week 17. So, um, get, you know, combining all of that, they have no better EV than either Minnesota or Denver with less future value. So with more future value. So for me, I do have Minnesota and Denver as part of my, my, I want to say short list. I have a bigger list than I usually do for week one. Um, but I definitely have been in Soda and Denver as priority plays, and I'm pro- probably not going to play a share of Jets. I, I want to start with Kansas City. It's a shame that Kelsey got hurt because Kansas City was never going to be a good play for week one, and all it did was push people off of them, um, which is unfortunate because my favorite two picks this week are Minnesota and Seattle. And those that were going to take Kansas City are naturally going to go in a different direction. And, you know, not, they might not go to – they're probably not going to go to Seattle. They'll probably go to mostly Baltimore, Washington, um, maybe some Minnesota. Uh, but Kansas City was never a play before. Uh, so I at least wanted to discuss that because I have that on my notes here. But now no one's going to take them because they're only a four-and-a-half-point favorite. But even at a seven-point favorite – you know, really just really an unplayable pick there. There's, there's a lot, there's a lot of slots in the first half of the season. And uh, if you're, if you're playing Circa, you really need them or Philadelphia for, uh, for Christmas. After Kansas City, uh, Jacksonville, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. There's just too many possible spots to plug them late in the season that look attractive. And then there's immediate strong options in three, four, and six. So I, I think Jacksonville is absolutely unplayable as well. It's a, a pure save uh, for this week. Uh, I would prefer dropping to the next level of teams at you know, the two three-point favorites uh, than, than take Jacksonville. Minnesota is my favorite pick. Um, the, the benefit to taking Minnesota is they're not playing Arizona. And the reason I say that is a lot of people are really jumping on this Arizona's tanking campaign, and that's going to be their strategy. Teams don't tank. I mean, uh, management tanks, but the players are always going to you know play hard. The spread seven, you know, I'm going to hope that Washington loses, but more or less they have the same win percentage as Minnesota. It's off by like a few percent percentage points, but. Uh, but you're getting him at probably half the ownership. I do think Minnesota and Washington are going to be hammered in the circa though. Uh, but you know, what can you do? I mean, I'm, I'm not going to take Seattle and all the three point favorites. So I, I'm going to do that next week, but, uh, Minnesota is my clear play. They, it's their best game the rest of the year. And then when you're making these decisions, look at what their other plays are and their other play is week 12. And when you look at week 12, you know, it's a team, you know, you really probably don't want to take Minnesota there. They're not a big favorite, but you got to, you got to remember a lot of the, a lot of entries won't have all of these teams ahead of them left between Dallas, Cincinnati, Jacksonville, Kansas city, and Detroit, the average entry. What do you, what would you think? Well, I've played at least three, maybe four of those teams for sure. So that makes Chicago, that that's going to make Minnesota at these spreads one of the more attractive picks. And if you look below that, most people have already taken Philadelphia, so that's not going to happen. They're playing Buffalo anyway. And if you look at the Jets, oh well, I can take the Jets. Well, yeah, but you might want to have the Jets for thirteen or fourteen. So Minnesota could be a very highly chalky pick in twelve. So you're you're probably better off just taking them right now than hoping that they're a good play in 12. I know other things can, you know, can play out, but you're going to have Minnesota available in 12 if you don't play them in one. And you're only going to have so many teams to pick from. If their season plays out as expected, 
they're going to be a viable option and you might not want to pick them anyway. Take them now. So you end up using them and not waste and just not wasting them. All right. So before we move on, so, so, um, Oh, I, I will. I want to make one comment about Denver. I actually do not like Denver at all because of week two. I, I there's, there's too many other teams that like Atlanta, I mean, well, not too many Atlanta and Atlanta and new Orleans. Well, that's what I are, thought. I gonna, that, that's what I was going to get to next. So, so, yeah. so before, we'll, we'll, so before we do that, I just want to just, just get rid of some of these. So, Dallas, their EV is not great anyway, and they have just a, a bunch of place to use them. Not to mention Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? So, so it's uh, so they're 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 a non-play as far as I'm concerned. Before we get back into the next that that last group, which to me is important between the, the Denver, Atlanta, New Orleans uh, crew, you know, um, yeah. Do you have any interest in? I mean, I couldn't imagine dropping this low with this team, but. Um, I just see just guys. Like I, pro- I probably have them written down right here. Go ahead and say it. Chargers. Oh no! I, oh no! Okay. Lower. okay lower. So forget. So we'll get to we'll get to that in a minute. So so yeah. tell me. So why don't you group these two together? Tell me the difference in your head between New Orleans, D- Denver, and Atlanta. Okay. What I did when we were deciding our entries, and you're not going to like this, but because you, you you challenged this mindset last year, but hey, I ended up winning anyway. I have, I have a loser's mentality when I play things like this because in all likelihood, you're going to lose. Um, I play these for fun. I hope to win, but I'd rather have the expectation when I hand over my buy-in, I'm just going to lose. I do the same thing for the main event. I try very hard. I've cashed three times, and I almost made day six. Um, but my expectation is to lose, so I'm less disappointed when that happens. Um uh, when I went, when we when we looked at the schedule and we're deciding on how many entries, because when they increase it to, is it max eight or ten? Ten. 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 Okay, it's max ten. People are going to multi account anyway. That's fine. I, I can care less. They're playing groups. That that that's completely within the rules. Um, we did six because I don't know. You might have got an extra hat or something like that. We were thinking of like you know five, and we rounded up to six. We decided just to drop to four because we looked at week two. Week two, when I did my first uh, mapping in, in, in April, I actually stopped right here. I did very little. I saw week two. And I'm like, oh, okay, the season is going gonna, is gonna to be made or broken right here. You cannot take the top three teams in week two. Well, at least for our strategy. You certainly can, but I want to set up for deep runs with strong teams or just lose really early. I said the same thing last year. And we were very close to getting eliminated in absolutely everything in week one. But New Orleans escaped the, you know, from the, the jaws of defeat when they were like two and a half percent to win. I looked at this and all I see is Denver and Atlanta. No, no, no. Uh, Denver and the Giants for week two. Um, I'm like, oh, those, that's who I'm going to take in week two. And uh, I, we just decided, let's just do two entries four entries and pick two teams and then hope one of them wins. And then we're going to take those two teams for week two. So that that's how we started. You know, our strategy was pick our week two teams and then work backwards and then work forwards from there. Um, and because of that, I don't like Denver this week. I would rather have all of my Denver's available um, for next week. And because I don't want to split with a different team, I guess Seattle could be an option. Maybe Miami at the Chargers, but Miami's got so many other spots. I'd hate to waste them when I can just take, you know, Denver. Wait, and the wait, Giants. wait, what are you talking about? Uh, for week two, I, I like Denver and the Giants. So that's no, why I know I that. But what were these other like, teams you brought, you brought up? Um, yeah, like for week two, like Detroit. Oh, Detroit. You said Seattle. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Detroit or my Detroit or Miami, um, and then working back, I, I just don't like taking Denver in week one I'd, I'd rather have them available in all my entries and take Atlanta instead and, and we're taking a little Atlanta we're, we're going to do a, an even split we're going to go 2-2 two, two in Circa Minnesota and Seattle and we're going to go 5-4-1 uh, in our ent- in our pool of 10 entries with one Atlanta and, and we're going to go 6-4-2 two with two Atlantas and those are all single pick pools until doubles in 13, but that's that, that's so far out. 
Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's, and that's how I came up with, I, I don't like Denver. I, I love Denver in a vacuum, a uh, very low owned team. Um, and, and to be honest, you might be right, Eric, like you get to week two, if enough people, if, if, if Denver separates from that third, from like a third tier, like that situation last year with, with Atlanta, where it was uh, Buffalo, Philly, and Dallas were the all 10 point favorites. And then Atlanta was a five point favorite. And then everybody else was a three. Remember, we, we didn't take Atlanta because I, I just didn't want to be on, on, on a 10% group. So we dropped to, uh, you know, Indianapolis and, and the Colts and lost. But, but that's fine. We were on unique, we were on unique teams. So Denver could, you know, separate and it ends up being a disaster where you don't even want to take Denver in two. But just going to hope that they group together and, and hope and if they win, you know, we'll, we'll gain, we'll gain an advantage over the Buffalo Philly and, and Niner, Niner pickers. And we too. Yeah. I think that, um, uh, see here, here's my thoughts on what Denver's could be in week two. So part of me worries that Denver's going to be chalk in week two. Um, I, see, I agree with you. They, they could separate and be like a five or six point favorite. And then it's a disaster. And then it's a disaster. You're and, right. However, um, the other thing, and from a psych- psychological perspective, is like even in Circa, you know, people go out there, they put a lot of money down in these pools, and, you know, they, they say they're going to play sharp or whatever it is, but at the end of the day, they're going to see Buffalo at minus eight. They're going to see Philadelphia. Well, maybe not Philadelphia. They're going to see freaking, God forbid the Rams get just wasted by Seattle, right? And, and they, they lose 40 to nothing. And then they see San Francisco play well, and San Francisco is up to like seven or something like that in week two. Oh, that'd then, be fantastic. We're not taking those teams in. Anyway. Oh, I know that's that. My point, my point is, is that then San Francisco, for example, is going to get slammed and yeah, yeah. is not going to be that chart. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, people don't want to go out in week two. They just don't. And, and, People say, well, I'll avoid this, 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 but then, but then when it comes down to it, they're going to see Denver at minus four, you know, and they'll, that maybe they'll play. I, I agree with you, by the way, the Giants and Denver are both going to be, you know, that those, those appear to be the, the two, the two teams to, to battle. I, I forgot they play Arizona. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. I didn't realize it until just now. I just knew I, those were my two teams for two a long time ago. Uh, hopefully Arizona doesn't play too bad because you'd hate to see that get to six or seven. Right. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, they'll, they'll, you know, listen, the, the Giants are still the Giants and people are not, Correct. Gonna, yeah, yeah. They're not going to be minus seven on the road against anybody. No, you're right. Because Washington, Washington's better than them or, or comparable and they're seven at home. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Um, I, I do like those three teams, though. I, I you know, new, uh, I mean, I, let me just look at New Orleans really quick. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get to New Orleans. So, so, but they're like, they're, I can't imagine why they're that much different than Atlanta. Um, uh, our, our thought was, you know, New Orleans, New Orleans has a very good chance to win their division uh, for relative to like how good, you know, that they are. The, the, the division's just trash. So what could happen is if they start running away with the thing and the other teams start looking in other directions, they might have some very lopsided spreads at the end of the season. Host, uh, host Carolina, host the Giants at the Rams, at Tampa Bay and Atlanta. That's a really, really good run out. If they have some nice separation in their division and, and one or two of those teams are in rebuild, let's try out this quarterback mode. Um, that would be a really nice team to have. It seems conceivable you can take them in the last five weeks of the season and be happy about it. I, well, I so, so I'd, I'd rather just not. I'd rather just not use them. Um, you're also, you're also going to want an option. In, I'm, I'm just kind of looking ahead. Of, like in week 14, you're going to get just like mega chalk on the Jets. I think um, at, at home against Houston, um, probably with them mm-hmm. being pretty available. Well, let's see what happens with Atlanta. So, well, maybe- really, to go on with since you brought 14 up, you would really like to have Philly or Cincinnati. Um, and there, there's an opportunity, I think, in week three where you just take both those teams and then you would have the other team available. Well, not no, Philly, not in 14. You mean somebody else. You need Baltimore? I'm sorry, Baltimore. I'm sorry, yeah. If you, uh, you can take Baltimore and Cincinnati. If you, uh, and whichever one you don't use, you can use the other in week 14. Because, the, like, like you said, the Jets, 
the Jets are going to be very chalky that week. They're, they're going to be used in the, in, the, in the prior two weeks or the week after. But in week 14, it's, it's going to be pretty much the pure fade, even, even at a 10, 11, 12-point spread. I mean, teams do lose. Um, and then the higher that they get, the, the higher their ownership percentage is going to be. They're going to be very, very available when it, when it gets to those weeks. There's one other difference for me, for those of you that I, sh- I should actually pause this and let's put this as a quiz. If anybody get this, if anybody get this right, they, 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 their attention span is much better than mine is. But um, one of the, in, in, with Atlanta, the pool that, one of the pools I referred to, I'm not going to use them in this week because I, I mentioned that one of the pools has doubles in week five. Um, and Atlanta is going to be in, a, a, a pick I'm going to have to just have available to me in week five doubles. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, that's, a, that's a, 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 okay. The, that then for that pool. Yeah, exactly. That's, that yeah. really brings up a good point that I've been working on in, in my notes and my mapping. It's not as easy as just looking at that week. You really have to be, you, you got to look at it for, through a lens of what the rules are for your pool. Uh, like for the, a really good example is in Circa. When you get to the Christmas slate, the two biggest favorite, the two largest favorites in week 16 are the teams that play on Christmas. So you can't take those teams on the regular slate. And right. it's very easy to like, you, you might know it, but when you're looking at it visually, it still shows those teams and you sort you yeah, know, sort how, by the how, 16 how column. Chalky, God forbid it, it gets to 16, right? But people get there. How chalky is Chicago going to be in 16? If Arizona's legit like 0 and 15 or something like that, and 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 Chicago on the main slate, uh, that's going to be an interesting situation. Yeah, I think I have that written on my computer. Actually, that Chicago mm-hmm. is a fade in, in sixteen. Well, um, and, and, and and you you look at the other one, and now I just mentioned the Jets, right? That, Jets in thirteen and fourteen are going to be probably used pretty hard. So, and that's where the, the Jets is, is a great play for a very interesting team for Circa because yeah. of that scenario. They, they have a run of three out of four games between 13 and 16 that they are a very viable option, actually up to the best option. But they're also available in three where they'll probably be very underpicked in, this, in Circa. So, Who, the Jets? The Jets. Yeah, the Jets are going to be 0% owned in Circa. Now. So the Jets in three could be a very, very good pick, really in any pool, but especially in Circa because – if you can get to six, if you don't use them in three, you really should probably just save them for 16 at current spreads and just hope that it shakes out right. Um, but yeah, because you're just not going to take Chicago. That's another one of those weeks that were, you know, Arizona, you just got to hope that they pick one off. Uh, it, there's, there's other teams like that's why when you look, when you, when, when you see all the green, you want to look at some of the lighter shades too, because this is where Jacksonville, you see another spot you wouldn't necessarily see right away because they're only a three and a half point favorite. But when you sort by week 16 spreads and you eliminate the teams that you can't pick, like, it, it, you know, for sort you can't take Kansas City or Philly. Jacksonville's now, the, you know, tied for the fourth, fourth best option. But if you've already, if you're using the Jets in 13 or 14, you don't have them. If you're if you're fading Chicago, you don't have them. All of a sudden now, Jacksonville is tied for the best possible spot uh, pick for you in that week. And yeah, you can get them maybe at a higher favorite earlier in the season, but you want to make sure you have some options. There's always going to be something when you get there. But Jacksonville at the end of the season could be a very low owned sharp pick. And they don't even need to do anything special. I mean, if they, if they just play out the way that they're supposed to and Tampa Bay and Carolina aren't that good, that's going to be a great team to have at the end of the season is, is Jacksonville. So if you're in, uh, I, want you, I want you to share what you said you were going to share, but you said there was another team that I might have left off. I mean, who, who, what, other, what other just quote-unquote brave play might, might exist? Uh, this would be very brave. It's, it's, for, it's because of that week, it's Chicago. Chicago, ah. Chicago is the lowest I would go. I, I'm not going to do I, – I, I am going to pick them in my league with double picks. And the reason I'm going to do that is we have doubles in 6, 12, 13, 16, 17, 18. You know, barring 
massive blood in the streets. Remember last year, there was a lot of blood in the streets in week six. It knocked out over 90% of the pool. The pool still went to week 16. We right. still made it there. And, and, and there was a t- over 90% got knocked out in one week. So I always plan for that pool to get to week 16. If I get to week 16, I am not taking Chicago. I'm not going to do it. There's, there's absolutely no way. What I would rather do is hold out and save. This is for doubles in 16. Save Kansas City or Philly and then just tag them with whatever best I have available. And because I'm not going to use Chicago in 16, then it's very important that I at least attempt to find a, a, a place for them. In at least a few of my entries, I'm doing 40. Because to get through this entire thing, you have to pick 23 winners. Now, I'm not, I'm not planning on it going 18 weeks, but I at least have to plan for it to go 16. And if I know I'm not taking Chicago, I would rather take Chicago earlier to hope that whatever team, like let's say if I'm deciding between Chicago, Denver, Atlanta, New Orleans, you know, leave, leave a little bit of those other teams and then hope that that team right. falls to me in week 16. Cause I'm not, I'm just, there's no way I'm going to take Chicago. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say that adamantly. There's absolutely no way I'll do it. There, unless there's, three people left but even if there's three people left the other two are going to take arizona so i'm just not going to do it um so that that's another thing you need to look at and and it's it's very disguised in there like it it doesn't seem like a team that's even important considering but i'm not saying take chicago there's i'm not saying that i'm saying if you are in a pool with lots of double picks and you're looking to open up a lot of great plays for later take Chicago I'm probably going to take four entries out of 40 on Chicago and I'm not going to draw I'm not going to drop any lower than that um yeah that's the that's the lowest that's the lowest I'll drop is Chicago and that's only because I'm doing 40 entries I'm not I'm not telling anyone to do that if they have one or 10 entries that's if you if if you're in a massive pool that's a great one to take Chicago because you're just not going to take them 16 anyway so what's uh what's behind you there? What do you uh what do you got the? Uh... So when I uh when I when I went to Vegas in uh, July for the main event, I bought into the Circa pool and my my uh my my proxy uh my my friend from college who's our our proxy picker, um he said they have a really cool uh printout of the schedule this year that you can buy. It's laminated. It's color coded with uh you know when each game is uh for that for that particular week. Uh, so it's not, nothing that necessarily helps with, you know, mapping for Survivor. But I like I like the color codedness because it resembles some of the stuff I do for my spreadsheets. And then at the top are my two favorite college basketball teams, St. Mary's and Kansas Jayhawks. So uh, yeah, one of these days, uh, actually, I'll like, well, I'll, I'll I'll tell that story again because I I did I I, I always. I promise I will tell that St. Mary's story at least once a year to whoever. I love that one. Yeah, we we, uh, we should uh, – let's wait. Let's wait. Well, we're going to do this whether we're in or out. I, yeah, I'm going to uh, say that there's a very good yeah. chance I won't make week three. Right. <laughs> we're, I mean, I, I, I'm going 50-50 Minnesota-Seattle, and where we're, and where I'm t- where we're taking it, Atlanta, we're going to take that out of the Minnesota picks. And the reason I'm doing that is the last comment I'll make is – Seattle has more opportunity to pick than Minnesota. So even just looking at week three, I would rather take one less Seattle now so I can take them in week three. And that's why we're replacing Atlanta there than with. Uh, so, the other so, so we're going to visual, we're going to visualize. So, so first of all, we're going to, we're going to call this and we're going to, I, I took a couple, oh, one thing I want to remind everybody is please get into the 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 true dfs survivor pool discord which is then the links in the in the description here and we're going to tweet this as well but uh really try to 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 get some good discussion going there because i really do like talking about this stuff and and the more you know interesting the conversation the more likely we are to 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 respond if you want to know the truth um but uh you want you know to to visualize you know you you have your, your the mapping in the background and all this stuff so what i would like to see is I would like to still be, you know, talking about Survivor, 
when I get the next installment of the skiing video of your of your was your daughter was it? Oh, that's yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. that was one of my favorite videos I received the whole season. Was uh was was the was the video of your of your daughter uh, meandering peacefully down the uh down the ski slope. You know, you could call that almost like uh almost like thematic because like Survivor is not is no always that smooth like going down there. It's more moguls and more slamming into trees and like and all that. Well, I mean, go, going with that at the beginning of that class, and I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, I saw her. I'm like, oh wow, she's doing so good. They're in the Bunny Hill uh, slope area. And then I realized, oh, that's not Jackie. That's one of the other girls. All five girls in the class were, were wearing pink uh, bibs. And I mislooked at her. Jackie That's was the funny. one holding them up in the back. And she was probably the reason they spent extra time in the bunny run area. But <laughs> later, on that, later on that day, she was able to do full runs by herself. And it's, it's kind of some, it resembles, you know, our season last year. We loved New Orleans. And that was, I, I, I mean, I just remember being very bad. I remember we had a better chance to win the Cincinnati game than New Orleans game. And, and, and it was the end up being the opposite. But make good picks. Um, I will not be watching on Sunday. I, I, I do want to let it be known that I, I, I followed through with, with, with that declaration from last year. I'm going to be going to the pool. So I'll have a nice little surprise when I turn my phone on. But I'm very much looking forward to watching the Chiefs play on national television yeah. like 18 times yeah. and uh, doing Survivor each week with you guys, even if I'm not in it. I, I, I will be happy to play hypothetical Survivor, but I'm hoping for one of the – Minnesota or Seattle, at least one of them to win because week two is going to be a lot of fun at, at current spreads. All right. Good luck, everybody. We'll see you next week. Good luck. Bye-bye. Right, see you later, Mike.